young. I am. And I am a young. Black. A young black. Young black. A young black. Black. Black equestrian. 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 Black equestrian. Equestrian. Black equestrian. Equestrian. Black equestrian. I'm a young black equestrian. I am a young black equestrian. <laughs> How are you guys doing? Good. How are you doing? I'm doing great. This is really great, you guys. I, I think this is a wonderful idea. So glad I stumbled upon it. And uh, that's we're glad we stumbled upon you. Yes. <laughs> Ooh, look at that horse in the background. <laughs> I know, yeah, right? Great. So, so this is um, a house that I'm renting in. South Carolina near Aiken. Oh, okay. So I come down here in the winter time for well, we'll get into it. But <laughs> I don't want to give it all away. Okay, we'll, we'll wait. So, yes. Yeah. Welcome to Good. Young Black Equestrian you. TV. Um, <laughs> we are really happy to have you here, and you are literally like one of the first people. You know when we start talking to people in the horse industry, it's kind of like, you know, either older people or some people that are like, yeah, I'm just now getting on social media, yada, yada. But you are already like website done, you know, <laughs> you got something going on in the tech world. And it's, yeah. it's hard to find horse people with horses and tech at the same time. Yeah, interesting. Yeah. So, I'm super excited to have you on today. Well, that's good. I'm, I'm glad to be a first. I'm one of many firsts that I have been in my uh, in my time, especially in the horse world. Yeah, yeah. Right. So let's just get started with, you know, introducing yourself. Okay. Tell us briefly, you know, your background and the horses you have and all those fun things. Sure, sure. Um, it's Tracy Turner, and I have been involved with horses. Well, let me start with where I'm from. So I'm from New Jersey originally, which, believe it or not, the part I was from is very much horse country and still is, although it's definitely competing with, um, you know, real estate development and all that sort of thing, because it is called a garden state for a reason. The ground is really great for um, for growing things, but that means it's also really easy to put houses up on it and it's mm -hmm. flat and all of that. So what made it also very good horse country is also making it um, very good for housing. Um, and it's uh, the the area where I'm from is kind of a suburb to New York City now. I mean, mm -hmm. it's, it's about an hour and change away, but still people are moving out there. So anyway, I... Um, got into horses at a very young age. I think I went to a county fair with my parents and um, and I had a pony ride and that was it. That was it. I was, that was it. I was four years old and uh, there was a local guy, interestingly, an African-American guy who taught horseback riding in our area. He had been a polo groom. His name was Congo Jones, great name. <laughs> and uh, he taught lessons at this farm not too far away from us. And uh, so I kept asking my parents after the pony ride every day, am I four and a half yet? Am I four and a half yet? Because Aww. he would only take kids starting at four and a half. Aww. So um, yeah, once I started, I basically never stopped. And uh, so I took lessons with him. And then um, as a teenager, I went back to the farm and got a job there mucking stalls and uh, made some lifelong friends and actually got my first horse from there as well. They were, once they, they were actually developing that property, they tore all the barns down, they were building houses and they were about to do that. And uh, the fellow who owned the property asked if uh, a friend of mine wanted this horse that um, named Buddy, a buckskin quarter horse, great horse. And she said, well, I already have a horse, but my friend Tracy might take it. Mm -hmm. And by then I had moved, um, I was married and had moved to um, New Hampshire. 
And so I didn't have my own, my first horse until I was an adult, Mm -hmm. um, but had lots of opportunities to ride horses at that farm throughout the years that I worked there. And uh, so had that as my first horse. And I was just thinking trail riding, you know, fun stuff, Mm -hmm. all good. And I did that for many, many years. And then uh, (laughs) this is kind of a funny story too. I went into the feed store um, on my lunch break and an old lady came in there. She was pretty old, really old. And she said to the clerk, "Uh, I'm looking for a buggy whip, looking for a buggy whip. And I thought, huh, I want to be looking for a buggy whip when I'm her age. Mm -hmm. So I said, I got to learn how to drive. So I went from riding uh, and I, and I'd always loved the fjord horses. So I Mm -hmm. knew of a farm that sold fjords, and I um, made arrangements to go there. Ended up with a yearling fjord. Probably wasn't the best thing in the world, but it turned (laughs) out well. And and I had a neighbor who helped me uh, train her to drive. And that's how I've sort of gotten into driving, a whole nother avenue. So I still ride. Not yet too old to ride. Oh, good. but I'm doing uh, driving and I'm doing that competitively, which is what brings me part of the year, the winter months down to South Carolina. Mm-hmm. So I can continue to uh, practice my craft. Wow. Yeah. I did not know that when I reached out to you. I don't think I knew that at all. I didn't know that. Full of surprises. Yeah. That is pretty. I am. Oh, yeah. That is pretty cool. Yeah. So I mean, you answered the next. All the questions. <laughs> <laughs> All of them in one. <laughs> yeah. Well. Yeah. So. So, what is your what is your day job? Um, I work for a um, insurance brokerage firm. Mm-hmm. And I've worked in healthcare really all my career. First at a managed care company. Uh, then at an insurance company and sort of, and then this is kind of how I got into the tech side of things. I went to a startup that was um, a healthcare technology startup. Mm -hmm. What back when people were just beginning to use uh, computers to do things like look up information about their insurance and that kind of thing. And now it has evolved. Um, much beyond that, where people are actually enrolling in their benefits online, getting advice from, you know, computers about what things to buy and that sort of thing. So I was in a startup that was doing that. And that's really how um, I came to the idea of One Source Horse was we're always trying to to get um, medical data and keep medical data on our own health and what we're doing and try to, and it's a challenge in the industry still to have all of that information, medical records and information in one place. Yeah. So, you know, when you go to the doctor, like, well, what are the, you always have to fill out these forms about what medications you're on and what, you know, things you've had, um, any illnesses you've had in the past, your family history. And you're like, I don't remember all that. Mm -hmm. How, How do I, how do you keep track of it? And that's a challenge for us. And and, uh, and it was literally um, because of my day job and, and wrestling with those kinds of things yeah. uh, for people that made me think the same thing with horses, where I'm sure, I don't know about you, but I have had lots of files and folders and books and things with all their vaccinations and when they're due and Oh yeah, um, I got a binder. <laughs> yep, yep. So instead of a binder, I thought it mm-hmm. would be great to be able to do this and aggregate all this information in a single place. So mm-hmm. um, when you're able to go into the site, you'll see the kinds of information you can keep on your horses, horse horses. Yeah, that's what I'm doing right now. Pictures included. Yeah, all of their. Um, you know, their veterinarians, any any other uh, professionals that you work with um, on them, as well as keeping track of your lessons, 
The thing I least like to keep track of, but it's in there, is an expense tracker. tracker. Mm-hmm. How oh, much man. money I spend. <laughs> I don't know. You know. I don't know if I want to really right. see it. <laughs> <laughs> um, so yeah, all those things. And then one of my favorite things uh, is the ta- what I call the t- what's called the tack room, where you can list all the things in your tack room. And then also, more importantly, if you loaned it to anyone, oh. who you loaned it to, when you loaned it to them, <laughs> and so remember to get it I'll back from them. Deeper into the site. <laughs> yeah, I, that? that is yeah. hilarious. That is really, really good. I could see that you know being beneficial to a lot of equestrians. How long did yeah. it take you to build it? Um, probably the better part of a year. I worked with a um a development team and a couple of friends of mine who are also horse people and um, you know to come up with the ideas and to figure out what we wanted as our first kind of version of it and I'm actually mm-hmm. currently working on um, a an second app. version but even more yeah an app <laughs> exactly that I saw you I saw you mention that I was like yes Yes, it needs an app. So uh, that's where we are right now. Because if you if it's really going to be useful to people, it has to be with them on their phones on mm-hmm. the go all the time. Mm-hmm. And uh, and and I have it's, and it's it's you know you can get it on your phone, but it's not mobile enabled. So mm-hmm. it's really small, and you've got to kind of you know increase the size of things. But I um, was on my way down here. We stopped at a place overnight, and the guy said, "Oh, before you take your horse off the trailer, I need to see your coggin." And mm-hmm. usually, I have it printed out in my the pocket of my truck, mm-hmm. the, you know, in the truck. But it wasn't in there, so I'm like, "Oh gosh, where is it? Where is it?" And I'm like, "Wait, I know." Yeah. <laughs> so I called up the site, and there it was because I'd uploaded it. Mm-hmm. Um, on the site, it was all good. So, oh, it's convenient. It is convenient. That is that is pretty awesome. I'm looking at it right now, and I mean, it's got everything you said. Like everything is. Oh wow! Okay, I'm a. <clears throat> it's got like a whole yeah. calendar, like um, and color coding by whether yeah. or not you had an acupuncturist, chiropractic, you did a oh, clinic, yeah. you had a competition, farrier, like, come on now. <laughs> that is really cool. And I'm pretty sure there's nothing like that, <laughs> aside yes. from having a skin paper. <laughs> yes, yes, there is nothing. No, I don't, there's nothing like this that exists, I'm sure. That is pretty awesome. So yeah, I, I've, I haven't found, I mean, there are other people doing other aspects, um, but not quite as in depth as this. And then, and then my goals for the future are to be even more of an aggregator of other things. So to have like, uh, you know, map my ride kind of access from here so that you can, it, it's truly, I want it to be an aggregation site. So you could have other things on there that you can access and only have to go to one place. Yes. So that requires single sign on and all kinds of stuff like that. But, mm-hmm. um, but uh, that's the goal. Wow. We can teach the 4-H kids how to use it. <laughs> yeah, we sure can. For their horse project. We can do the whole horse project on. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, um, I need to I need to write that down, or I'm not gonna remember. <laughs> but that is that's you exactly right. Um, okay, so let's get let's get. I just I I could just ask you so many questions. So let's start. Let's roll back some because I'm so excited about this website. Sure. Um, and yeah. just talk about your horse journey, your equestrian journey. What challenges did yeah. you face as a minority? I know you said you had a black trainer in New Jersey, but I'm sure, you know, your counterparts were not the same always. So what, what were some of the major challenges that you faced coming up in the horse industry? Well, I mean, 
I really, I, I really thought about that question a lot, and um, I couldn't really think of any, except for perhaps um, a lack of exposure to what was possible. Though mm -hmm. I think I even went to um, when they used to have the National Horse Show um, in New York City. Mm -hmm. I think I went to that, but somehow I didn't see myself as a person who would do that. So, mm -hmm. and my, you know, it wasn't that my parents weren't encouraging, they were very encouraging of the whole thing, but they just didn't know what was possible either. I think right. as a kid, um, I did one little show that they had at the farm, you know, because it was right there and I right. borrowed this horse and, and I rode in it. But, um, you know, if anything would have kept me back uh, from that, those days, it was that they probably couldn't have afforded to have me, you know, doing shows and going to the shows everywhere and, and mm -hmm. no yeah. way to, and I didn't have a horse that, you know, so it was more that, not that I was a minority. Um, and then even when I moved uh, to New Hampshire and started getting into driving, the only thing I found is that I was the only one, you know, yeah. the only minority involved in the sport. And I still find that I haven't met too many other drivers who do the kind of driving I, I do. I think there are people in the park horse world. Um, but I'm in the combined driving. I do combined driving. Mm -hmm. um, what does that mean? And I, um, combined driving is like three-day eventing for horse for carriages. So you have three events. Um, one, the first is dressage, so like okay. three-day eventing is dressage. And the second one is marathon, and that's the equivalent of cross country. Uh, in eventing, and so you go a longer distance, maybe 10 kilometers, maybe more than that, 10, 12 kilometers, and um, they have obstacles that you have to navigate through every so, you know, many kilometers, so there might be five or six different obstacles with A, B, C, D, E gates, and depending upon the level you're driving at, you have to either go through A, B, and C, or A, B, C, D, and the higher up in the levels you go, the more gates you have to go through. So you have to figure out your route through these things and try to do it as fast as you can. Mm -hmm. And uh, and then the third event, the third event is uh, cone course, where they set up 20 sets of cones with little tennis balls like on top of them, and they're not in a straight line; they're all over the place. So you have to walk that course as well. It's kind of like the equivalent of the jump course in three-day eventing, right. the stadium jumping. Mm -hmm. So you have to go through the cones also for speed and accuracy and um, and, it, and not hitting the cones, which would knock the balls off and you get mm -hmm. points deducted for that. So it's, it's a really fun sport. It's, that sounds exciting. really fun. I don't know that I've ever it's seen good. like dressage performed with a carriage with a on carriage. the back. Yeah, I'll like, send you. A, I'll send you a link um, to a video about it. That is so. Every time I watch it, I still get kind of emotional. It's just so beautiful. And then, and so I do. I drive a, a pony. It's a German riding pony. Uh, so I'm I'm in the single pony division. But there's single horse. Then there's pairs. Some people drive pair of horses. And then the really top top people will drive four in hand so they'll drive four horses in the that, garage four horses through the obstacles <laughs> that is funny i know i just watched the video of is that like when it's the person driving they have someone sitting beside them and there's somebody on the back it's yeah there's two on the back when it's four horses oh, okay for me i just have one navigator on the back and you may have seen the fei championships that were in um europe and they're in an arena. Um, yeah, and that's the video that's <laughs> that's, Yeah, arena driving, and that's crazy. That is just crazy. That so was nonstop. insane. That gave me so much yeah, anxiety, yeah. like, <laughs> oh! I know. <laughs> <laughs> but I know. that's amazing that, that, you know, literally someone with their hands. I mean, even a single pony. I have so much anxiety about being in a carriage 
<laughs> looking at yeah. this horse's butt as, <laughs> right. as their goat, like, I, I just, I, I know. don't know. I don't I know. know. When, I, when, I, when I first started, I used to move my legs around in the carriage. It's like, they're no good here. They're no good. Um, and, but now I am at a state, I, rem- I almost remember the moment when I became as comfortable in the carriage as I as I am on the back of a horse and um, because at first as a rider you just feel like you've got no control because you're so far away from the horse's head mm-hmm. but that's why your voice is a big part of it and you have a whip and you're not you know whipping them like they do in the movies it's for <laughs> it's for it's it, it replaces your leg you know it's mm-hmm. like you touch them on the side because you want them to move away or bend curve around so it's a whole different set of tools wow. um, that you use in driving. What does the navigator do that's on the back? What does the navigator do? Uh-huh. Um, they do two very important jobs. One is they serve as ballast. So when you go around the curves really fast, they have to be on the side of the carriage to keep the carriage from turning over. Mm-hmm. So, um, um, So that's one of their jobs. And then the other job is to, you know, sort of help you remember where you're going. Mm -hmm. So they literally, you know, sort of are your navigator. You have walked the course, but, you know, it's a lot of things to remember. The driver is responsible for knowing, but sometimes the navigator can help you, you know, just say, okay, you got to remember we're turning right over here or left over there. So and then they also keep track of your time. Mm-hmm. So um, there's certain um, kind of window of time you want to be in at every kilometer marker. So your navigator is keeping track of that. And, uh, and there, you also have to go through what they call compulsory gates that are numbered to make sure that every single person does the same course and goes mm-hmm. the same distance. Right. So they keep track of your going through the gates. They keep track of your time. And when you're going through the obstacles, they have to move around on the carriage to make sure it doesn't turn over. This sounds like a whole so, operation. Yeah, like that. <laughs> it is. I don't know which part I would want to do. Both of them give me anxiety. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I, I, you know, I really think the navigator's job is the harder job. Yeah, it's not the harder. Job. So the driver has to remember. Yeah, but yeah, they just have to focus on on that. Wow. So, um, it's it's and I and I and that's the other reason I love it is because, uh, for memorization, mm-hmm. you know, like it's it really works your brain to have to remember your dressage test. Remember mm-hmm. your cone course and remember the marathon obstacle is it's a lot and and i I love it so how do you go about like getting a cart and figuring out like so the horses or the horse you use like they were trained already to use this cart like are are you having to train you know what co- what comes first yeah. the, the cart or the horse <laughs> <laughs> with the cart before the horse right <laughs> um uh, so so when i first started again the same thing as when i got my first horse i was just planning on being that little old lady going down the road in a cart and enjoying the scenery um, and so I got this yearling and I don't recommend that people who don't, haven't ever driven before get a yearling to plan to drive it. Um, but I did have this wonderful neighbor who had trained harness horses for the track, racetrack down the road and he was thrilled to help me and we ground drove and we did all kinds of, you know, all the basic work and I'd actually trained, um, I had um, Alaskan Malamutes that I trained to pull a sled too. So I kind of had wow. experience training something to pull something. Yeah. So I used a lot of the same kinds of um, techniques and um, just with a horse. And uh, so I got her driving and riding and she was fabulous, really great. She's still 
with someone now uh, on free lease who's riding her mostly. But um, she was a great horse for me because she was very um, forgiving. You know, like you could make mistakes and she'd be like, okay, whatever. And just not, yeah, not super reactive. The horse I have now is a different, it's like going from a Ford Fairlane to a Porsche. I mean, he's very competitive and that's why I went to the next horse when I decided I wanted to be more competitive in uh in this sport i i needed a different horse um she's in her 20s now anyway so it wasn't yeah. fair to ask her and it's just not um the best breed for that kind of competition they're a heavier breed and you need something that's much more agile and and athletic and um so that's why i made the switch but and he had been trained to drive so he wasn't new to it but he hadn't really been in competitions before so um he was new to that okay. and we're, we're we're working on it we're doing we're working on it but um and so and that's again the thing i decided because of my job i don't have kids and because my job uh i work from home in new hampshire um i one day i said you know what if i can work from home here i can work from home anywhere anywhere and, yes uh, goals i am where, trying to get on your level <laughs> where there's no snow and I can keep driving all year round. So, mm -hmm. so um, I found there's this great community of um, drivers in Windsor, South Carolina, which is 10 miles from Aiken. And there's mm -hmm. so many, it's the horse person's Mecca, I'll tell you, it's really great. Mm -hmm. And uh, so this is my second year coming down for the winter. Wow. Awesome. In these competitions, <laughs> Are there money prizes? Um, not, are there any money prizes in it? I think there is in that arena driving uh -huh. thing at, at the FBI level, but at the ones I'm at, no, unfortunately. Mm -hmm. That's what we need to get to to really get more people <laughs> is uh, money. But no, we just get ribbons <laughs> and, uh, you know, well, a, a lot of shows. A lot yeah, of shows are that. only doing ribbons, so that is mm -hmm. all right. I just <laughs> wonder, <laughs> yeah. Did you know how like in rodeos is different? I was, yeah, I was, rodeos have money right. in them. Mm -hmm. Right. I think driving should be a rodeo sport. Right. It sounds like <laughs> a rodeo sport. I want to see driving at arena stadium driving at Bill Pickett. Okay, that would be <laughs> out of this world. We'll work on that. That would be great. Because it, it, I mean, it's like you, you, it's like the chuck wagon races they have up in Calgary. I think it's Calgary, right? Mm -hmm. That's I bet there's money in that. And it's now for us, you're not on the course when other people are on it, or I mean, they're ahead of you or behind you. But it's not like a head-to-head -head race. Right. It's, um, right. It's they they take your time. You know, they figure out your time and then. Uh, combine all three of your scores to get the winning time mm -hmm. wow. a winning person yeah yeah are you part of like an association like where yeah. you get like your They're, half points awards and stuff um they do that and i think they mostly do it for um uh, for um like hours driven there oh, is okay. an award for that so they get the american driving society and they do hours driven but they do have more, I think, in breed shows, high point awards. So I know the Morgan um, people have a lot of that kind of stuff. I'm not, I'm actually not in a German riding pony society. I should look it up and see if there is something like that. Yeah. But um, <laughs> I know the Morgan people do. That's awesome. That is, that just blows my mind. Yeah. And yeah. Do you have any videos that we can watch of you? Has anybody reported you? Do I have any? Mm -hmm. Uh-huh. Yeah, I could send you a yeah. couple of those. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that would be so cool. And then, and then like, yeah, in the, in the winter time, um, before I decided to come down here, I would do slaying too. I have a really great picture of us uh, doing a sleigh rally, which was a show <laughs> with slaves even. 
Yeah, so, I'm gonna need there are all kinds of crazy things he's driving people. I that's how I said I started getting into combined driving. I said I started hanging around with a bad crowd, and the <laughs> next thing I knew, I had like a bunch of carriages and you know, <laughs> looking for a navigator. And <laughs> it sounds like a healthy habit. <laughs> right. I think, that's what I tell my husband every time he, you know, says, "How much money are you spending on these things?" I think I could have worse habits. I could like shoot. Right. <laughs> right. Has, exactly. he ever been, has he ever um been uh with you while you were driving? Like at any time? He 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 comes with me sometimes, but not in the in the shows. Um, it would be bad to have him on the back. <laughs> oh, not in the in a, in a <laughs> Yeah, yeah, that's crazy. How fast do you go? Do you have? Does your navigator like keep miles per hour? That's a good question. I've ne we've never tracked that. I should try to figure that out because um, it can get going pretty fast. And um, you know, I'm at the. So there's training level is the first level. I'm at prelim, which is the second level. Then there's intermediate and then advanced. So I've got two levels left to go. And those folks go quite fast. Wow. Wow. Who, who like does the maintenance on your cart? Like, are you kind of doing the whole operation, like making sure all the cart tack is together? Yeah, I do. I do that. My husband has helped me with a few adjustments that we've had to make on various things. Um, but yeah, the carriage that we use in the competition is a four wheel carriage. Mostly these carriages these days are made in Poland. And uh, so they get imported over here and, they, and they've got disc brakes, uh, you know, suspension. Okay. They're quite Technical, high tech. They're not like the Amish buggy you see going. To That's what's in my mind. Not, right. Amish That's what I'm. I'm picturing like <laughs> click, 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 clicking, clicking along. Like you know, just no. These things are. These things are quite um, fancy. I'll send you a picture, couple pictures. Yeah. Uh, but and then I have a two wheel cart, um, a, a metal one. And then I have a wooden two-wheel carrot cart. The, the, when it's a, with two wheels, they usually call that a cart. Okay. Um, four wheels is a carrot. Um, and uh, and a sleigh. That is. Do you, know, do you know how much they weigh? Because I can only imagine. Uh, um. Yeah. The um. The carriage. The competition one is about three hundred and fifty pounds. Well, oh, that's not bad. That's I was thinking like into the thousand. I don't know why. I no, like, like that's no. a strong <laughs> pony. I know that's a strong if you, pony. If you, if for, for the four horses, you know, for the four in hand, those carriages probably weigh mm -hmm. quite right. a bit more. Right, right. And they're okay. bigger. Yeah. So, okay. Um, Oh, cool. Oh, my God. I know. This is so What's, cool. What is the name of your um your pony, your current pony, driving pony? Uh, his name is Chardonnay. <laughs> <laughs> okay, fancy. <laughs> and, he, and, he, and he's very, he's very fine. And so people say, oh, what's her name? What's her name? And I say, it's a him. And, and they say, oh, what's his name? And I go, Chardonnay. <laughs> <laughs> I call him Cooper, which is because the Coopers are the people who make wine barrels. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of a wine reference, and he's his is the breed where they name the um, the first letter of their name that tells you what year they were born. So he's in a C year, okay. two thousand nine. So he's got a C name. That's cool. That's cool. I didn't even know that yeah. was a rule. That yeah, fjords, fjords are the same. My fjord is Soldard. She was born in an F year. Wow. It's a good way to keep track of, of that. Yeah, um, yeah. And, and I guess somebody could try to change the name. Well, not like on registration papers, but that's a great way to prevent people from lying to you. Yeah. Not yeah. Hmm, learn something yeah. new every day. Every day. You do. So, yes, uh, let's 
switch back to the website. Yes, let's see your questions because I'm all prepared <laughs> for them. Yeah. So, <laughs> so, I mean, you told us, you know, how this came about, but what, mm -hmm. like, how do you even know how to pull something like this together? Like, does it require a whole lot of finances? I mean, obviously you have people to help you, but what, what was that experience like pulling all this together? Yeah. And it out there? Yeah. Yeah. Um, first it was just, you know, getting the ideas down on paper. And then I did work with a web developer um, and they had some, um, a lot of offshore resources, which brought the cost down um, significantly, but still the, it, there was a cost to it, which I financed myself, you know? So, um, and that's probably something I should do more work on is trying to uh, get other funding to be able to do more things because it, it is an expense to do it, but we wanted to get something up and usable and also make it initially free, which it still is free mm -hmm. uh, for people to use and then, um, you know, monetize it, which is the next big step um, to add things and, and to give people um, additional levels that they can and, and capabilities they can uh, purchase. Mm -hmm. uh, for adding more horses or whatever the other things. Right, right, right. Wow, that was that's that sounds like a a good plan for sure, for sure. So yeah. these yeah. these people, um, you know, your team are they staff members? Like, is do you have to create a business to do something like this? Um, I have created a business and they're not staff. They're really just friends who are helping. None of us are getting paid at this yeah. point, but, um, yeah. but that's kind of, you know, hopefully the reward is down the road, um, when yeah. it really takes off. So that's how we've done it. But I'm, you know, the CEO and, uh, chief bottle washer, all those things, you know, and then, uh, my technical person uh, there, Rich Peterson, is um, is probably the one who is the most uh, instrumental in the ongoing efforts right now. That is super cool. That is. Yeah, I'm glad you had the idea and acted on it. Cause this is so. Yeah, good. thank you. <laughs> thank you. Yeah, I'm super excited. So, is there a way to like? integrate like say say a business owner a barn manager you know has this resource for the barn but yeah the horse owner wants to get access to it do you yeah. see what i'm saying is that yeah a absolutely I mean, that's a lot that's a lot of what we were um planning for is to be able to share the information Mm -hmm. uh, so as long as the barn owner is also a member, they can share information back and forth. And then if you sold a horse, for example, and you wanted to share the, the records that you kept mm -hmm. with them, you could share the records that you kept. Um, another really cool feature is you could do, if you're going to a show or to anywhere, or, or someone's going to be taking care of your horse, you can go into that profile and mm -hmm. just click. The, the pieces of information you want to share. So while I have in there for my horse, um, I have. Uh, oh see, yeah, you can share your you book. Know, I see. Yeah, you, I have his name, you know, all the stuff, but also I have what I paid for him, but I don't want to share that with everybody. Mm -hmm. so I don't click that box. I just click my name, my phone number, what he eats, what size blanket he wears, if he has insurance and who to call for a vet emergency. So I yeah. can go into which information <laughs> I want to print out or email to someone to share it. That she, Adriana sent me this long email <laughs> when she went out of town and I was watching yeah. her <laughs> Right. And had all of that. Exactly. Well, you know what? <laughs> <laughs> there was I put everything in there like if I don't come back 
This is exactly <laughs> what I need. <laughs> <laughs> Everything. I do. And, right. and I mean, honestly, so my veterinarian passed away. And it was a uh, struggle to, I mean, I don't have the exact dates of the la- the things that I have gotten done in the last five, six years. Like, I don't mm-hmm. have exact right. dates. I mean, I've got my yeah. like folders and things, but I've restarted these right. folders like several times. Yeah. So something like yeah. this would definitely, you know, prevent me from being in that situation because mm-hmm. I had to right. get like the person who was over his estate to even tell me if um, I had a rabies vaccine done on my pony. And right. I was like, yeah. horses yeah. don't get rabies tags so I'm like ah did I do it did I not right. I can't tell from the amount yeah. that I paid whether or not it included a rabies right. so so yeah, yeah this is definitely definitely solves a problem for the horse industry and I think it does a lot of people you know they they want to start businesses and they have all these ideas and that's how you have to do it you have to solve a problem mm-hmm yeah. So this is amazing. Well, yeah. So I'm. I don't know if you can see this, but um, here's my. Here, can you see that? Um, so there, it, he tilt it hand. down a little bit. Is that better. Yeah. A little bit better. I can see the pictures. You have videos on there too. Yeah, you can put video on as well. Oh, wow. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then, um, let's see. Well, anyway, you'll see. When you get on there, you'll see. Yeah, I'm happens. on here. <laughs> I'm excited. I'll have to look at the meeting <laughs> hang up. <laughs> yes. Yeah, you can, you know, put how many, like, literally all their descriptions, mm-hmm. brands, yeah. tattoos. Um, yep. You can put their, their, um their uh pedigree their dam and their sire in there um Mm -hmm. all this extra information this is just simply amazing and i would once as you get in there and play around i'd love your feedback on other things that you think um should be in there yeah i'm literally gonna tell group as a as a feedback group um yes a hundred percent yes and I know so it's so hard because we have some so many great interviews and we're like okay so who's going out who's going out right (laughs) but this is definitely I think one of the ones that we need to put out sooner just so that our listeners can utilize this resource and Mm -hmm. you know benefit from it sooner rather than in a month from now or two months from now so this is really dope. I am Great. I am just super excited about this. So um Great. what what advice would you give an aspiring equestrian who wants to do something yep. like doing? Yeah. I mean especially I think right. it's it's <laughs> it's what um what's that? I said especially the, the uh, driving part. <laughs> right. Oh right. I, I well I a couple of things I, I would really suggest that they um, enter shows what I didn't do as a kid um, for and that I'm having to learn now as a grown-up um, it, it really makes you practice and it try to improve I mean it wasn't really until I um, really decided I wanted to focus on it that I said okay I have to do things in my life. I also read a book by Denny Emerson, which I recommend, but I have to do things, make changes in my life to put me in the right position to be able to accomplish those goals. So I think, you know, depending upon how serious you decide you want to be, um, you need to see how to make those changes. And it doesn't really necessarily require money. It requires putting yourself in front of people who might take an interest in you, give you Mm -hmm. horses to ride. I mean, I was at that farm riding and mucking salt. I mean, mucking salt, that's mostly what I was doing. 
-hmm. And um, a guy's daughter, who guy had a pony for himself and his daughter, um, and she was going off to college, and um, he he came, he would let me ride the, uh, her horse. And one cold morning, he came to the barn, and I was getting ready to ride, and I was blowing on the bit to warm it up before I put it in the horse's mouth. And um, and he saw me, and he said, "You can ride that horse anytime you want." And it was as if it was my horse. Yeah. For the rest of the time I was there. And it's so, you know, just being kind and being friendly and thoughtful and all those kinds of things can really give you opportunities that you may not otherwise have. So, I mean, I've never really had to own a horse until I was an adult because I had access to horses right. at the farm. Right, right. And 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 so what I, I also think that entering shows does is it, it makes you practice. It um helps you sort of get over the nerves that come from performance, just like any other performance, I suppose. But the younger you start doing that, the better at it you become. Mm -hmm. And uh so that when you get more serious in your riding or driving or whatever your sport is then you've already kind of got a way to handle the nerve part. You're, you're right. over that. Right. Um, just like when you learn to ride as a kid, you're not nervous about it when you're an adult. You're just like, oh, yeah, that's what I do. And mm -hmm. if you're doing shows, it's just that's what you do. And then I think the third thing it does that's really important is it teaches you time management. So for uh, in the ridden disciplines, I mean, that's where it depends on how much warm up any one person's horse needs. Um, but in driving, I mean, there's a lot of hitching up and then you have to dress for dressage in mm -hmm. this outfit. <laughs> Got a hat and all kinds of stuff. Oh. And um, so it, it takes and then you've got to warm up. You've got to, you know, prepare. So all of those things, it teaches you how to work backwards from when you want to be, when you're going into the ring mm -hmm. and be ready to get into the ring. And I think those are good um, disciplines to learn yeah. for all of us. Yeah, yeah. And I think even um, like going to shows, especially when, you know, you're first starting out helps with the being able to talk to people that you don't know. Um, and the yeah. whole net networking thing, like a lot of people don't like talking to, you know, introducing themselves or, you know, right. somebody drops something, you're like, hey, you know, let me help you, whatever, or somebody yeah. doing that for you. A lot of people, you know, if they start out when they're older, or when they're adults, they're kind of like, you know, okay, yeah. you know, this is, I just know my team and, you know, I'm right. not, not familiar with everything else. So I, I would... I completely agree with that advice for sure. Yeah. And, and um, that was a, something in the book by Denny Emerson uh, called How Good Riders Get Good. And he says, you know, we're not in the people business. We're not in the horse business. We're in mm -hmm. the people business. Mm -hmm. And that is really true. As exactly what you said of just being, um, you know, helpful or, um talking to people gets you um, into a lot of, uh, gets you a lot of opportunities that you wouldn't have. I wouldn't be here in South Carolina if I hadn't been friendly with people who have houses down here who mm -hmm. invited me to come and check it out for two weeks and bring my mm -hmm. horses and stay in their apartment above the garage. And, you know, and that was just them being nice and me being, you know, I'm very grateful. <laughs> Yeah. And here I am. Yeah, yeah, that is awesome. So um, tell everybody your um, website name again and where we can find you guys mm -hmm. on your social medias and stuff. Sure, sure. Um, the site is onesourcehorse.com, no spaces. And we're on Facebook um, and less on Twitter, but we do have Twitter. I, it, this may inspire me to do more there um, and maybe talk about where we're going to be and um, what uh, kind of events we're doing. We do sponsor 
um, shows when we can. We're sponsoring a show down here again this year called Small But Mighty, and it's for um, people who drive minis, miniature horses, <laughs> with carriages. <laughs> there are a lot of them. <laughs> and I think as the population gets older, we'll see more of that because who wants to have to lift your arms up really high to put a harness on a big horse? My horse is the perfect size for me, 14, one and a half. Um, and that's, I, have, I started with ponies because I wanted to do it when I was too old to ride, right? So I didn't want to have a big horse. Yeah. So I had to manage. So, yeah. So that's where we can be found. And I, I encourage and invite everyone to check out One Source Horse and sign up while it's free and uh, get it on the ground floor, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Sign up right now. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> You know, I, what is the smallest mini you've seen pull something? Cause I swear mine is too small. I, he's too small to work. Oh, so I, what are they like? I can't, I'm not a good judge of that, but they're no, they, they can do a lot more than you think. Huh? <laughs> I'll say it's your baby. Well, Put yeah. that mini to work. Work? He does work. He gets petted. He, All of them need a job. He he has a job. He's he visits old people <laughs> and kids. That's his job to not poop on the floor when I, I take him I, inside of a I building. Have a I have a friend who does that with her mini, and she also drives them. <laughs> uh, so sorry, <laughs> you can't get out of it. <laughs> Well, you know what, you know, I just, I just have to work on trusting this mini with my life because I just feel like he's no, going to like, and you hang a right and I'm going to just be toppled out. Like, oh my God. That can happen too. That I'm going to just jump also. out. Like I'll hit one bump and I would just jump out. I don't, like That's, that's what I would do. <laughs> No, it's, it's, you do have, even the minis, you have to train them. It's not like, you know, you can just yeah. jump in there behind them. They need, they need training just like a big horse does. I just yes. need to ride with somebody a lot. Like You have um, to tell them to train them. Hers is almost there. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> yeah. It's just a matter of getting yeah, in the carriage, and, and it's so fun. It's it, and that's the other nice. I mean, you can ride with people, sure, but if you have a friend who doesn't ride, it's nice to be able to take them in the carriage and go for a drive. Mm -hmm. It's really fun. Uh, yeah. So as much as I like the competition, I like just going down the road too. Right. Right. I just. Yeah. That'll be, that would be funny. That would be funny because my mini looks like my big horse. So if somebody is riding oh, yeah. on the big horse and then the mini's pulling somebody, <laughs> that would be hilarious. Oh my God. I know. I have uh, a 17 three-hand thoroughbred that looks like my German riding pony. So I call mm -hmm. them me and mini me. Mm -hmm. No. Mm -hmm. <laughs> horses. Well, thank you so much for taking time out of your day to talk with us. I am so excited to share this resource with our people because they they just don't know what they're missing at mm -hmm. this point. They don't know. Uh, thank you so much. I really appreciate it. And I listened to um, one of your podcasts recently with, uh, what is his name? R.L. Robert. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Robert. Yes, and that was fascinating, and I'm going to reach out to him, so thanks for, yeah, for um, that. Yeah, he just became the, he just became the finance yeah. director for, uh, right. the, for the Jumper Association. The in yeah. Oh, yeah, 100 Jumper, that's what it was. Yeah, yeah. yeah. so no, reach out to him. Yes. Yeah, because for help with the marketing um, for One Source Horse and mm -hmm. all that, so... Yeah, yeah. So that's very exciting, yeah. and thanks for making these connections for us. Definitely, that's what this is for. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. Well, thank you so we much. Have to thanks. <laughs> thanks. <You too. laughs> Bye. Bye.
Thanks so much for watching YBE TV. Be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel to see more of our content. Rate, review us on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, and Spotify. See you guys next week.